Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafaroff. Today with us, a woman who has really made history. Her name, Brenda Simmons. And Brenda is the founder of the Southampton African American Museum. She joins us from St. Martin in the Caribbean for this very special interview. Let's all welcome Brenda Simmons. And Brenda, it once again is a great honor and a pleasure to have you back on Successful Philanthropy. Thank you, Jean. It's a pleasure being back on your show. I enjoy being on your show. Thank you so much. And yes, I am in the sunny paradise of Sunshine City, St. Martin. And it's just a pleasure to be again on your show, Jean. Yes, now for our audience, many are unaware that a Southampton African-American museum even exists. I understand that it was in the making for 16 years and that you persisted, you kept it going and you never gave up. And today or last year in June, 2021, you finally opened the doors to this incredibly wonderful museum. And tell us a little bit about the history of the museum and why did it take so long to open up? So we probably need about three days to explain all of this, but I'll try to make it short. You know, the museum was an old barbershop and that was erected in the 40s by Emmanuel Seymour who was part of the Great Migration. And I say he came to Southampton with a dream, a plan, and anointed hands. He was a carpenter and he purchased property there in the village of Southampton. I think we need to take a moment just to even think about that. He purchased property back in the 40s, escaping Jim Crow and coming to New York and coming to the village of Southampton on top of it. And he purchased the property, he built the building, and he was a barber. He was a barber. So, you know, that was the beginning of it all, to be honest. And as time went on, um, my aunt also was a beautician there, because when he built the building, he built it with the barbershop on one side and the beauty parlor on the other side. And my aunt, Evelyn Baxter, was the beautician there. And when I was like 12 or 13 years old, I literally used to go in and answer the phones for her and do coffee runs for her. So the building is, is, is a little intimate for me as well. So moving forward, um, as time went on, Randy Conquest ended up purchasing the property from Randy Conquest, uh, from Emmanuel Seymour. And then he was the, um, the owner of the beauty of the barbershop up until about 2015 or so. And then it was there vacant. And before that, let me say, it became a wonderful, wonderful gathering place for the local African-Americans in the village of Southampton and the East End. I mean, it was a place where they call it the living room, perhaps, where people came and they gathered, like I said, they worked, you know, as um, they worked in the fields or they worked, you know, in the potato fields rather, and they worked as domestic workers. And so they used the barbershop and the beauty parlor and the juke joint area as a place to come and hang out and let the hair down and really enjoy life, you know? So as time went on, also I want to say that Randy Conquest was very instrumental in actually training young black men how to be barbers. And so he helped them get their license. And to this day, two of them still have their own barbershops. So I just want to reiterate that and to make that known that it was such a unique place. And Randy also um, shared with me in the interview that he made sure that people understood the importance of voting, the importance of education. So it was a real great gathering place for the African Americans. So moving forward, as I make the story quicker, is that the place he ended up selling it to the town of Southampton, they purchased it, and it stayed for a bit. And it got to a point where a group of us in the community decided that we need to make this um, unique, iconic place, a permanent place for our village. So moving forward, um, it took me 16 years to get all this together. You know, it was a lot of ups and downs, a lot of challenges. I won't go into all the details, but it finally came to a place. The Southampton town purchased the building with community preservation funds and is on village property. 
So, and so we, let me interrupt you here. It's on village property. Was the town of Southampton supportive? It sounds like they were very supportive in, in your project of building the museum. Yes or no? Absolutely, positively, extremely, extremely. If it wasn't really for, and I have to give kudos to my friend, <laughs> I call him my friend, Assemblyman Fred Thiel, State Assembly Fred Thiel. He has been so supportive of all of my projects. So it was through the Community Preservation Fund, which he actually, you know, created, was how the building was purchased. So, now, yes. why was it 16 years? I had heard in an earlier interview uh, that there were problems with uh, construction people, that things just didn't get done. Is that correct? That is correct, Jean. To get to that point, I will say, the first time they was actually went out to bid, no one took the bid at all. And you don't know how hurting that was to me after working all those years to try to get to that place and then no one took the bid. So then I met with Fred about? Thiel. Excuse what me? What was that all about? You know, I, I really, I'm trying to, you know, decipher what it was really all about. And we can make assumptions. And part of my assumption is that um, it wasn't totally supportive with, for everybody wasn't totally supportive and behind this project. And, you know, if I can be real with you, um, as I travel and people ask me, where am I from? And I tell them I'm from Southampton. Sometimes they give me this look like, really? And then I really mess with them. I said, yes, I'm born and raised there. And I was assistant to the mayor. So I think I just want to put that out there. I think there was some, I mean, Village of Southampton has this known for being a, a resort from people coming from all over the world, et cetera, but not necessarily that people of color live there and work there and leave a legacy there. So that was my determination to let people know that we have a legacy and we made a huge contribution to the village of Southampton. Was there discrimination against you back then or was there not? You know, I was, I think about that when I, I'm, on, when I'm asked that question, my first impression was, no, I didn't think so. But then really I've had, I had several encounters and one encounter that I'll mention is when I was in high school, I graduated from Southampton High School and we didn't have a black studies class or a black studies teacher. So we literally did a sit out to get that done. So we didn't have that. So we were able to accomplish that. And then another incident I had, um, my mom and my dad was from the South. So they experienced Jim Crow and those things. So I think basically to protect us, our, our, me and my siblings, they told us that we couldn't go down Job's Lane. And that baffled me and puzzled me so much. And I was one of those type of children or, you know, type of person that, you know, I, I'm curious. I'll just say it that way. So one, I think was on a Friday or Saturday night, um, a group of us high school kids got in the car and we decided we we're gonna drive down Job's Lane because we wanted to figure out what's the big deal that we could drive down there. So make a long story short, we drove down there and we saw all these you know, uh, mannequins with all these beautiful clothes on, et cetera. I figured what's the big deal, but we got to the end of Job's Lane to turn left to go down Main Street and a gentleman was coming down on South Main Street and he saw us. And he said to us, what are you N-words doing here? And so that was very shocking to me. You know, that was my first encounter. And immediately I understood why my parents didn't want me to encounter. They were protecting me. Yeah. And that was a terrible thing for that man to have done back then. I don't care. Uh, things like that should never, ever happen. Today, Southampton, of course, is very, very different. And that's a good thing. And all are welcome into our community. And it should have been that way many, many years ago. I'm glad it has changed. It was, it's long overdue. And I'm sorry that you had to encounter that because that's a, a, a really a terrible thing. Now for our audience, we are with Brenda Simmons and Brenda joins us from St. Martin. She is the founder of the Southampton African American Museum, which opened up its doors in June of 2021. A uh, Brenda, moving forward, I understand you're going to be honored in April of 2022. And 
you started to talk a little bit about that with me before the show, but in your words, first I wanna say congratulations. Tell us about that honor. I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. Um, I was chosen for the Ann Ackerson Leadership Award through the Museum Association of New York. And I'm told that's one of the highest prestigious awards that anyone can get through that organization. And so I am, I'm extremely honored to have gotten chosen for that award. And I'm also thankful, um, I also received an, um, a glaring recommendation from Assemblyman State, uh, State, State Assembly Fred Thiel. And I was told there was two of us that was, they were trying to choose who to give this award to, and um, I was I was I won out the um, the choice. So I'm very I'm very very honored, and that all will be happening at the um, Museum Association um, conference, um, April 9th, I believe, to the 12th in Corning, New York. So I have to leave my beautiful island of St. Martin a couple of months ahead of time, but it's all it's all well and good. I'm very honored to have received that award. And you should be very proud and congratulations in advance because that is an award that you most absolutely deserve to receive. And I'm sure moving forward, you will be the recipient of many more awards for your wonderful, wonderful work. Now, the social season in the Hamptons is coming up and the Hamptons are known as the playground of the rich and famous, but during the social season, much goes on in the way of philanthropy. And as all of you know, the name of the show is Successful Philanthropy. It is designed to highlight the work of those doing good in the South Hampton, in the East Hampton communities, and then beyond. And Brenda, what's on the horizon for the South Hampton African American Museum? I know you have a fundraiser in June, around Juneteenth, and then there'll be more events. I'm involved in one July 28th, but in your words, what can we expect to see this summer? We have a phenomenal, robust program ahead for 2022. And first I want to say that we had the pleasure of receiving a wonderful $125,000 digital tapestry award um, from the Rob, Roger David, Robert David Foundation, Gardner Foundation. And it's an amazing, I'll just read just really briefly, it's an experience, it said you will experience, it's called an augmented reality. And you, really, you basically, you hold the phone up and you look at the real world through, through the camera. And then as layers of magic, Paintings come alive, historic figures engage you in first person to tell not just dusty history, but their stories. You really have to, you really need to experience this. It's really history that has never been seen before. And we're so, so excited to share that. And then I want to give a little peek on um, our keynote speaker this year is going to be Aaliyah Bundles. And Aaliyah Bundles is Madam C.J. Walker's great-great-granddaughter. I don't know if anybody has seen the Netflix um, film Self Made. Well, Aaliyah Bundles wrote a book, and that movie is based on her book. So I'm just extremely excited to share that she will be our keynote speaker on Friday, June 17th. And then on June 18th, we have Halo is going to be highlighted an all-black female barbershop quartet group that's phenomenal. And we have two awesome, awesome art exhibits. It's going to be in May. And the second one is going to be a soul exhibition by John Pentehues. He's an awesome, awesome photographer. And we also have a film that we're showing um, on July 22nd in collaboration with the South Hampton Art Center. And that's going to be called The Inventor. And it's amazing, amazing short film regarding Garrett Morgan's um, invention about the, uh, the uh, gas mask, yeah. And then you have a fundraiser on July 28th, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. And I've been so excited, Jean. I wanna personally let everyone know and thank you for your support. Last year, we had a phenomenal fundraiser and you were very, very instrumental in that and I really appreciate that and that that you're going to be on board with us again this year is very very uh, we're very very uh, honored and thankful for that as well 
And I'm excited about that upcoming fundraiser and all of your events. And for our audience, Brenda, how do you buy tickets and how do you donate to the museum? Because many people watching this, they're, they like what you've done and they would like to help. They just maybe don't know how to do it. And I say to, to the audience, when you're thinking about donating, well, some can write a large check, but for those of you who cannot write a large check, well, any amount counts and never underestimate the value of what your donation might bring to an organization. So what is the website? The website is www.saamuseum.org. That's www.saamuseum.org. And now as we get closer to these events, will there be a button say on the website that says purchase tickets to uh, the June 18th event or the June 17th event or the July 28th event? Absolutely. I am working. We finally basically finalized our program, our 2022 program, and I'm going to be sending that to the website shortly. So you'll be able to go to the website and see all that information. And there'll also be incorporated there a place where you can tap in to not only do tours, but to also purchase to do the tour and or to come to the fundraiser event. Yes, now if someone wants to get more involved, is there an ability to reach out to you and say, Brenda Simmons, I'm here, I wanna get involved, I'd like to make a major gift, or I'd like to really get involved in the planning of future events. Is that a possibility? Yes, I will give you my personal email address as well. I'll give you two of them. One is bsimmons at saamuseum.org, or you can do GMA Weapon of Power at iCloud.com. So those are the two websites that I'll, I'll present for you. And I will welcome anyone who wants to reach out to me and I will gladly receive any help, any advice or any support that you give, give to us, little or small, as Jean says. Now, I understand you're also giving private tours of the museum. And of course, these tours take a lot of time. And if someone wants to go on a tour, I guess, Brenda, they need to reach out to you as well, correct? Yes, you can reach out to me and we're asking suggested um, donation of $25 and trust me, it'll be all worth it because we'll have your, you get your digital tapestry experience, you'll have, we'll have ex exhibition there, the upper level and the lower level exhibition. So, I mean, even $25 will take more, of course. And I have to say, last year I did tours from fr every Friday through Sunday from the beginning of Juneteenth up until mid-November. And so many people were very, very generous in their donations when they did the tours. It was tours were so, they, re they were received so well, people were excited to get information that they'd never seen or known before. Yes, and I remember you telling me how exhausted you were from giving so many tours. So maybe in the future, you'll have some volunteers, docents who can also give the tours. Now, Brenda, Looking ahead, say five and 10 years out, are you expecting to perhaps expand the museum or maybe to have other satellite museums in the Hamptons? I know Sag Harbor might be a center and other places in the Hamptons where a strong African-American community flourished and continues to flourish or are your plans right now just for Southampton? Well, I have to add that we have this beautiful mural that was made by Chinnacock artist David Martin. And with this digital tapestry um, we have, we're going to duplicate that mural and we're going to be able to take it into schools, universities, etc. So that's kind of where we're targeting right now. Um, we've done collaboration with the local school now for maybe 12 years or more. And just to reiterate, also, uh, we had a soft launching of the digital tapestry two, two Saturdays ago. And that was really to bring people in, to test it out, to get any kinks out. And it was really, really well received. And we purposely had special invitations to the school, to the principals. 
we had a wonderful group, a Girl Scout group come from Hempstead, believe it or not. And it was wonderful, but we're looking to really, really do a collaboration educational wise, because as we know, a lot of our history is not being taught in the school. So it's time for us to tell our story. And it's a very important story. And I'd like to see more museums crop up like this, not only in the Hamptons or on Long Island, but across the United States, because I think the story and, and the history of African-Americans in the United States needs to be told. And some of that history is really a horrific history, the, the story of slavery. And that, never, that story never ever should be forgotten because it's a story of man's inhumanity against man. And right now we're in a situation where we're all in the midst of experiencing a war in between Russia and the Ukraine. And it's another situation, another horrific, horrific time in history. And I'm hoping that war ends quickly so that all of the horrific deeds towards the Ukraine and its people end very quickly. And I'm sure you're in agreement with me on that, um, Brenda. I am. And you know, the other thing I want to say that what I'm also targeting or really want to put into my mindset now that we have accomplished, African-American people have accomplished a lot. And so many times, yes, the slavery and all that was horrific and it was horrible, but right now, what, I re what we really want to do is emphasize all the wonderful um, accomplishments that African-Americans have done. I mean, we even know about the hidden figures. When that movie came out, who knew about that? Who knows about Garrett Morgan being the inventor of the gas mask and so many African-American inventions that has been, that we take advantage of and we use every day, that we don't know that African-Americans had a lot to do with those inventions. So those are things that we really want to focus on the highlight of the accomplishments and the wonderful things in this cruel world that we're dealing with now. So that's what I want to also mention, you know, um, that's one thing we're kind of targeting on the, the accolades of what we have accomplished in this world. And Brenda, it's all so important. Now, Brenda, if someone wants to follow in your footsteps, and perhaps begin a museum and their community, how would you advise them? Well, you know, it's funny because they want to start a museum here in St. Martin. They've asked me to come to advise them on that. And the first thing that I'm thinking of, what I would say to anybody is it's important to get the government to finance it. And of, all, of course, other people in the community to finance it. But I feel like the most important thing is to get government financed to support you, what your what your dream is, and then also to get other supporters to help you on your journey. You know, but that's one of the main things I think. You know, to be sustainable, you have to have the funding. So right, funding is key, and then you have to be organized as you are. And finally, what advice do you give? to young people, maybe just starting career right now. It's been a very tough few years with the COVID pandemic and now a war going on. What advice do you give to anyone who wants to get ahead? You know, the, the most important thing I think that I'm gonna say is you have to know who you are and be confident in who you are. And that's, I think the most important thing because if you are confident in who you are, and acknowledge who you are, you'll have that stamina, you'll have that, that, that go-to and that never giving up stamina that helps you to overcome so many obstacles that you're going to encounter. So I think that's um, one thing I would say is get to know who you are and, and, and honor who you are and have those connections of people. And when you have a certain uh, way about you that you have, um, I guess a prestige, I'll say, of people when you are, uh, uh, I'm trying to get the words out, when you really are a certain person um, of compassion and love, you know, and the last thing I'll say is a, a, a model that someone said to me, it's not about the applause, it's about the cause. All very good advice. And I say to the audience, believe in yourself, work hard, and get 
an education. It might not be a college education that you need to get. It might be a trade school education, but prepare for some sort of career so that you can go out and make a living and support yourself and a future family if you decide to have one. Well, yes. Brenda, you've been an amazingly important guest, a woman that I respect and truly admire. And I want to thank you for joining us from St. Martin and for taking the time for successful philanthropy. Thank you, Jean, again. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you, Brenda. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. Our guest today, Brenda Simmons. I'm Jean Chaparroff, your host. I'll see you next week.